guys. So here we now have the kill stripes in place. And I'm very happy with the way it turned out here. Um, again, applying the liquid mask helped me protect all the areas here that are worn and battle damage. And uh, so it looks, uh, looks pretty good. All right, so next thing to work on are the ear pieces. And um, so I'll show you how that's going to go here shortly. And uh, then we'll finally move on to the trim here, which, uh, as I mentioned before, is going to be red and battle-worn as well. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the ears, and uh, I'll catch up with you in just a second here. All right, guys, just to show you my progress here, um, I've applied now the gray color to the upper mandible as well as to the earpiece. I decided to work on both because they needed the same color. And um, so what's next now is to apply... Uh, this tan color to the earpiece and uh, then the upper mandible is going to need um, a maroon color as well as the final red color. Uh, the other earpiece is going to be requiring a green color which I have a separate green for that and of course the red so I will wait on that and uh, so next will be then to apply the uh, rest of the colors here and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. All right, guys, you can see we're getting close here. I've applied the red finish now onto the mandibles, and um, pretty much what's left here is to weather it with some pastels. Uh, what I'm going to do is darken this area up here. There's a streak that uh, goes off in this direction there, and uh, then there's some weathering that needs to be applied here and down here, so I'm going to, again, just use pastels to do that. Uh, you can see I've attached one ear already, and I hand-painted these uh, red sections here, um, so it looks all weathered there as well. And uh, so what's next now is to just finish that and uh, work on the other ear. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it all up here, and then I will show you the final helmet. So hang in there. Okay, so here we now have the finished helmet. Uh, the visor has been put into place. Uh, this visor was ordered from a company called t-visor.com and on that website you can find all kinds of visors actually for different types of Star Wars helmets so check them out. Uh, they're not terribly expensive. So for this particular model I ordered the Slim T Deluxe Visor and that ran about $17. Uh, the visor was fairly easy to install. I did have to change the curvature a little bit and that was done by just dipping it into hot water and uh, just gently curving the um, visor to get to the proper contour I needed. Uh, really didn't take very long, uh, but uh, you take it from hot water to cold water and it, it holds its shape. I ended up using hot glue to hold it in place and it's uh, fairly secure, so I think that'll do for now. And um, the uh, rest of the helmet though i'm happy to say looks pretty good i'm, I'm very satisfied with the results uh, i do want to say that uh, this is not a screen accurate helmet by any means i mean it uh, is a good facsimile which is what i was after uh, i didn't follow every single little detail and contour that the templates provided uh, but again my um, goal was just to create something that looked very close to the boba fett uh, helmet we saw on empire strikes back the uh, rangefinder does come down. Uh, let me just show you that real quick. I'm going to have to stop the camera and then uh, bring it down. Okay, and you can see now it's in the down position here. And uh, the one thing I did add to the rangefinder here are these two little uh, red lights, or at least they simulate the lights that are supposed to be there. And you know, I actually got these from some extra uh, odds and ends of that, that were left over from a uh, 1350 scale Enterprise model. Uh, I just happened to have these two uh, little uh, pieces that were tinted orange uh, and I ended up using Tamiya's clear red to paint them red and they fit in just perfectly there. So the uh, rangefinder was installed by drilling a hole uh, through the helmet um, and through this piece and uh, it's held in by a quarter inch uh, flathead screw and um, the uh, opposite side has a wing nut so you can tighten it uh, when you need to. Uh, the decals that I'm waiting for just still have not yet arrived, but uh, there are some decals that go onto this earpiece as well as the opposite side, so I will be applying those as soon as I get them. All right, so I'm just going to wrap it up here by just telling you and list off the colors that I use. Now, not that many of you might be interested in building a Boba Fett helmet, but in case you are watching this video and that is your intention, uh, let me just let you know that I ended up uh, using acrylic paints. Uh, the colors that you see on the dented helmet uh, that apparently are very screen accurate uh, are made by Humbrol and um, 
I actually had a hard time finding Humbro colors, uh, so that's the first thing. Um, you can still find them, of course, online, but um, uh, I just didn't want to wait. And, and the other thing I wanted to mention too, though, is that Humbro uh, are enamel colors and uh, or enamel paints. And I don't really enjoy working with enamel. I like working with acrylic because they dry faster and are easier to clean up. So what I did was I tried my best to, to find colors that were close in, in, uh, in appearance to the Humbrol colors they listed. So here we go. The dome and the cheeks were painted with Tester's Panzer Olive Green, 1943. Uh, the red trim was painted with a Tester's Insignia Red. I used Insignia Yellow for the kill stripes and uh, I blended uh, or mixed together the red and the yellow to create the orange color that it blends into over there or fades into. Uh, the ears were painted with tan on the uh, right side there, and then I used uh, Euro. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I used uh, Tester's Russian Armor Green for the opposite side, and for the back um, panels here, I ended up using Tester's Euro Dark Green, and then for the gray, I used Euro One Gray, and uh, for this other color that you see on the back side here, I did end up using one Humbrol color. And uh, that was a satin color because I couldn't find a tester's paint that matched that. Uh, in fact, the color that you're supposed to buy is something called concrete, and I couldn't find that at all. And uh, so I found a color that I thought closely matched that, and that's what you see here. The other mixes, including the orange, as I said, is just mixing the yellow and the red together. And then the purple color, I used uh, tester's blue angel blue along with the insignia red to come up with that uh, purplish color that you see here. And then the silver paint that I used was made by Dupacolor. It is the Galaxy Metallic Silver Color. All right, so there you have it. And again, this project was uh, made for my son here. Um, it's a Christmas present I bought for him, and I promised I would detail it in this manner, and I'm happy with the way everything worked out. This helmet now makes the third helmet project that I've done. I'm not sure I plan to do many more helmets, but uh, they are fun to do, uh, something different to add to your collection. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a good example of, of being able to paint a layered uh, color scheme here. And hopefully you've learned something from this video that you can apply this type of technique to some of your own models. And lastly, I want to give uh, credit to a gentleman by the name of Lewis White. He has a YouTube channel uh, called Lewis-WhiteFX. And uh, you should check him out if you want to do a Boba Fett helmet. He knows everything there is to know about making a Boba Fett helmet and his helmets come out quite exceptional. So check him out. Um, he's got also a Facebook page there too. Uh, lots of hints and advice that he can give you on making your own project. So Lewis, thanks a lot. All right, that pretty much does it now for this here. And uh, I'm gonna move on now to the Hasbro Millennium Falcon conversion. Um, it's gonna be a couple weeks before I get started on that. I just wanna take a little break here as I prep for this next uh, build. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me on my YouTube channel, of course, or you can email me at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. As usual, thank you very much for watching. I always appreciate it, and take care.